are live. What's going on, everyone? Um, it's Brooke Kinnick here. I'm the founder of the High Ticket Ecom Incubator. And today we have uh, Roger with us. Roger, do you want to give us a brief intro, maybe name where you're from? Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Brooke. Yeah, my name's Roger. I'm from the central coast of California, between San Francisco, LA. So, out here. Nice, man. Nice. Well, you've been in the program for um, six, seven months now, is it? Seven months? Yeah, I think it's uh, since November, actually. Since November, so seven or eight months now. And what has, um, what's your best month been so far, results-wise? It was in May. It was, we did about 50, I think, I think we broke 55,000 in sales that month. That's incredible, man. Good for you, that's awesome. Um, so when you join the program, obviously, for, when people get started in business, it can be, they think like it's very, very daunting, and um, I'm sure, you coming in weren't really sure what to expect. Like, what, what did you do before? Did you have any e-com experience when you came in or had you done any business experience at all? What did that look like for you? Um, e-com like this, not much business. I mean, I've done window cleaning here and there, mainly just had jobs. Uh, before coming into this specific program, I think a few months before I, I did start another program, high ticket e-com, um, but it just, didn't have what I needed, what I felt I needed. So, um, very, very basic knowledge of e-com in general coming into this. Oh, I didn't know you actually had another program beforehand. So, what about mm -hmm. um, what about this program? Do you find has more? Is what you need? Is it is it the one-on-one -on -one Slack that you like, or what? What are your favorite portions of the program? Yeah, I think uh, just the responsiveness because. Even though we're following the same business structure, there is a lot of nuance in between the different niches, um, the, the types of, some, sometimes you're doing B2B, sometimes you're doing just uh, regular residential customers. So the one-on-one -on -one coaching, the Slack, the review, um, uh, also the focus on just the data, um, especially when you're doing your first um, research, the niche selection, um, the suppliers, kind of the focus on doing your homework to set yourself up for success there. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's just pushed on a lot more, focusing on the higher leverage items. So uh, yeah, more support for sure. I mean, the other program uh, was inexpensive. Um, they did offer some feedback, but it, it's just kind of an email here and there. So here it's like, uh, you know, I have a question, put in the Slack, and most, most of the times it's you, it's the coaches, or if not other students. So uh, there's always support. Yeah, I think that, that's one thing. Like I remember before I ever started in business, a lot of the time when you're buying a course or any like information type product, you think you're buying the list of steps. Like you think you're buying the, the course, mm -hmm. but it's not usually the yeah. course that's helpful. It's, it's kind of like you said, it's like when you get to step three, this specific thing came up for you that would only maybe come up for you. Like it's a very nuanced thing. And then you need guidance on the thing. So like all, like in my opinion, like all the information and steps you would need to succeed are like on YouTube or they're on Twitter, but that's not what is worth paying for. It's kind of like, like you said, that fast guidance on a specific thing that has come up on your own journey. It's tailored specifically to you. You know what I mean? Absolutely, I, I totally agree because the information is, not, I mean, I feel like it's gotten a lot better as you've been upgrading it, um, updating it, uh, especially on school now. But uh, yeah, the information wasn't so, so different. Uh, I was I was following you on Twitter and seeing what you were putting out and I'm like, okay, yeah, this is kind of what I'm following. But uh, yeah, being part of this community and having people to have that feedback, especially with their niche selection calls and early on, it kind of set us on track for success versus kind of what I started beforehand and it was like, yeah, that's, that's good. Go for that. But it just really wasn't, yeah. it's wasn't, like you know, setting ourselves, ourselves like, up for success. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's almost like when you, it's almost like the, the group acts as your guardrails in a sense. Like if, if you're on like a, if you're bowling, for example, and you're going to like go off to the gutter and, and let things slide. If you don't have anyone to guide you, it's very easy for that to happen. But if you have like me checking with you every week, your coach checking with you, where you're like, hey, like, why are you not responding for two weeks? Like, where are you at? What do you need help with? It's very easy to stay on track and just to keep moving forward. And that's the key is um, 
a lot of people will start a business and then give up like two, three months in, and then it's like, of course you can succeed if you give up that quick. But if, if you can just stay in the game and stay consistent and stay at it for a year even, like your chances of succeeding mm -hmm. go up exponentially. So whatever you can do to kind of like, whether it's that personal support or being just in an active community, like those are the really valuable things in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that accountability. Uh, you push a lot for speed, especially at the beginning. There's so much you can get caught up on, setting up your business, stuff that really doesn't matter. So just to focus on specific tasks, on specific speed, accountability for those things, I think especially it helps us out, especially if, if we don't, our first time setting up a business, first time getting into e -com. I think that can be a game changer because you know, at the beginning, one little thing and you're very discouraged and then you want to yeah. stop. So it's that can make all the difference from pushing through those initial barriers. And then now once you ha have your niche, have your store, then you kind of you get your footing underneath you. So I think that makes a big difference, especially at the beginning. So when you um, do you work a, a job on the side of your store now or um, do you want to eventually go out at full time or what does that look like? Are you doing it with something or what's your situation? Yeah, as of a few months ago, I've been full time. So I did start off, uh, I was working full time. I was doing carpentry, um, building cabinets, cabinet doors. So, but uh, yeah, I just saw this taking off and uh, you know, you, you get out what you put in. So I saw the focus, um, I could really focus on this and get it going, especially when I had a little bit more uh, direction understanding and maybe touch upon that but at the beginning there's so many variables unknown so you gotta want to make sure this is going to work out but I, I saw that this is once I understood uh, how this is not just a, you know just a, a quick money play but this is actually building a business and adding value to the market and to your suppliers and to your customers and I'm like okay this is something that I could double double down and go full-time so doing this full-time you know a few other little side gigs but this is kind of my main source of of focus for as far as work. That's awesome, man. That's awesome to hear. I, I knew you started with a job. I didn't know you actually had gone full time on this. And that's that's one thing. Like mm -hmm. I'm about to see before I got started with high ticket, is I did like low ticket stuff. Like I did, and they just never really felt like businesses to me. Like I, I guess they technically are, mm -hmm. but it it wasn't something where I thought like I can put all my time, all my focus into this and actually turn this into something valuable. Which I think is a little bit different about high ticket. Like a lot of people get caught up on the word drop shipping, but really all drop shipping is is just mm -hmm. a way of fulfilling an order. Like Walmart drop ships a lot of orders, Best Buy does, like all these Wayfair does. Like it's it's just a method of fulfillment. But in terms of the business itself, you you can really scale it as big as you want. Which for me, I think like if I'm really gonna go all in on something and put my effort into something, like you did now, where you like left left your job, you have to kind of see that upside. Mm -hmm. You don't want to you don't want to have a situation where you think like you're gonna get a viral product like some sort of lava lamp and then next month your sales are going to die. Like yeah. it would be hard making a decision like that if that's what the business was. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I actually, I, I thought about, I actually did a little bit of research in low, in low ticket. So when I started that, the other course, high ticket, I got a little bit kind of disappointed in the process. I was like, hey, maybe low ticket build up some funds. Man, I saw that and I'm like, I'm going to have to be testing products, be behind the next trend. I'm like, this is, I can't, you know, sustain myself in this. It's going to take yeah. more work than it's worth. So then I stumbled, up, uh, you know, upon you and your course, but oh yeah, with low ticket, it's unless you, you know, some people are just are experienced in that and they can churn out products. They have sort of the, the whole systems in place to do that, then good on them. But man, I feel like, yeah, what better way than just to build a, a sustainable business, a real business. Um, and not have to worry about trends. You know, there's a seasonality aspect of it, but you can get around with it with having different products on your store. That's all you're really worried about, especially when you have these great quality suppliers. It's like all year round, you're good. You don't have to be um, chasing after the, the next trend. So with, um, with your experience specifically, I know for a fact you have a, a beautiful store. I know you put a ton of work into that. So I'm sure that's definitely played uh, a role in, in your success so far for sure but on your end is there anything in the program that you think has made a difference like do you think it's the, um, the niche that you picked that, that has kind of allowed you to, to break through or is it is it your ads or what do you think has been the main thing that's led to the results so far 
you know, I th the main thing I think is just is, you know, you remind us about the importance of closing high quality suppliers with products with search, good search volume, dialing it, understanding your ads, optimizing your, your, yeah, your store, mainly your landing pages or your product pages. Um, at the end of the day, I think that's what it comes down to the, the niche, um, you know, the, it's, it's a, it's a fun, it's exciting niche. It doesn't have the best margins on the main products. So we've been able to get other products with great margins. So, um, you know, it, it's turning into a successful store. Um, uh, the website design, I think, uh, you know, we've been able to refine it, but at the end of the day, it was, Hey, you know, choosing a really nice theme and just kind of working with that. So, um, I think it's the it's the big three at the end of the day. No matter what niche you have, no matter you know how what experience you have, it's it's closing the right suppliers with good margins, good search volume, uh, being able to understand and dial in ads, which has been really a focus for me in the past month or so, more so. And yeah, your the product pages because when customers come, they want to have a good user experience. So uh, yeah, and the closing the suppliers, I think that's that's been a game changer for us. Once we understood, uh, we're not just here to take market share from others, from the people that are doing it, but actually how we're adding value and how we're positioning our store. Um, who are we selling to specifically? So now when we call on the phone, the suppliers, you know, we're not saying, yeah, you know, we are, we're a store that wants to sell these products. It's like, no, we're serving these customers. Um, this is what we're pushing. This is what we're advertising. This is why we think your products are going to go great with our current catalog, with our current customers that we're already in talks with. That's been a huge game changer. So, but it's really the biggest things that, um, that are stressed on, on the course and, and through our coaches. So focusing on that and not getting caught up on the little things. Um, cause I know that's happened to me. I've had working on the store, uh, you know, spent too much time on, on the font uh just you know all these little things that don't really matter um and you, you you see these questions come up you know on the slack and other things and it's like it, it, you know you just have to kind of get past it because i've spent weeks on the on the 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 thing that later on i'm like that wow that didn't even matter that product we don't even carry it because it's not a product with any decent margins so focusing on on the big needle movers i think that's been the real game changer i completely agree like i like use I always see people in Slack and like worked up about this stuff, and it's just like, obviously you just tell them like, hey guys, like this isn't a good use of your time. But I can my favorite one is when people are worried about like the sales tax before they have. Oh sales. yeah. It's like, yeah. You don't have to pay sales tax when you have sales. Worry about getting the sales, and then we'll figure out the sales tax. Afterwards. Yeah. And <laughs> in the font and the add to cart button, yeah, all that stuff. Um, all that stuff, not like it's very. There's a million things you can get caught up on as you're going through the process. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing is, like you said, if you close good suppliers, build a good site, and run ads, you're in excellent shape. And it's not. It's never. Um, it's never a static thing. Like it's never. Uh, sometimes you'll see people think, "Oh, I closed my suppliers. Now I'm doing ads." It's like no, keep closing yeah. them. And and like you, you said a great point. Like when you start, you almost feel like you're below the supplier. Like you're asking them to do you a favor to, to sell their stuff. Yeah. But it sounds like you're at the point now, like I know for a fact you've closed a bunch of suppliers that we've had other people in the program say like they can't close, like they they just won't work with them. And it's because of what you just said. Mm -hmm. You're you're not just saying, hey, can I sell your stuff? You're saying, hey, this is what we do. This is the market we're serving. And this is how we can bring you value. And when you approach it like that, you are on yeah. a much more even, you're, you're approaching them as an equal saying, hey, this is what we do. This is how we think you fit into our plan and how we can help you. Um, would you consider a partnership? And if not, then it's, it's both of your loss because you're showing your value as well. Yeah. It's, not, it's not coming from a position of neediness, which is hard. Like yeah. I think when, you get, when, you get, when you first get started, that's the natural inclination to feel. But the quicker you can get to how, where you're at now, the astronomically more successful you'll have closing suppliers. No, I, I totally agree, and I think uh, it's important early on to figure out who, what market you're you're serving, and that's that's part of you know different with high ticket drop shipping. You're establishing a, a real business, so you know you position your store. Who do you want to serve? I mean, you can sell to a wide range of people, but the focus, especially when reaching out to suppliers, letting them know you know what is your business going to do, how is it going to add value to the market, and that helps to reinforce 
that confidence, that belief in yourself, where you know that you're actually, you know, doing something helpful. You're not just taking sales from the supplier's website or from other other resellers. So doing that and then just, yeah, just getting on the phone, that was a difficult one. I know for myself, my business partner, Nate, he's, he's been really good about, you know, getting suppliers on the phone. I know for myself, on you know, starting off with phone calls was difficult, but man, you learn so much through those calls. Uh, what they, you know, what their concerns are, uh, what they want out of their, their resellers. So the earlier that you jump on, on the phone and, and talk to them and do that, it's, it, that way it helps you kind of develop your, your pitch, but also how you're going to, which customers are you going to, you know, go after and how are you going to better market your products. So, and you get a lot of great insights from them. So, uh, from that and through customer service, um, especially when you start not outsourcing that too early. So that way, you know, who your customers are, what are their worries? And yeah, it, it, it's a process, but it, it's worth the effort, the investment, you know, again, it's not low ticket drop shipping where next month it's going to be out of style. This is, uh, you're laying down the foundations for a, a sustainable business. Real brands, yeah, real brands. And no, I know for you, like, um, I had a look at your account last week, and like, you had everything set up pretty well. But it's just a constant lever. Like, you're gonna have like, your suppliers, your website, and your ads. And like, you might get your website really good, and you might get yeah. your suppliers, but your ads might be trailing behind. And I think that was the case for you. It's, mm -hmm. um, you had, you were obviously bringing in some sales, but I, I saw some things that I actually updated the modules since you probably last set them up. So now you can go back into mm -hmm. the module fix the ads and then your ads will be back up and I'm sure that will lead to even better results and if you just keep focusing on those three things over and over again, like websites, suppliers, ads, you will inevitably get there. Like it's almost impossible not to. It's just focusing on those main, main three things. So um, on your store now, how many brands do you have? Do you know? How many brands? Um, I don't know, probably over 30. At least, yeah, and there, we still have maybe like five that we still need to onboard. In, in so, your sales so far, like, is it an 80 20 thing where you're finding the majority are coming from the same few suppliers, or do you have a nice spread? Yeah, I'd say it's about, yeah, 70 30 ish. So, 30% amount for the majority of the sales are the bigger ticket items. And I do have a, a, a good amount of suppliers that are accessory. Uh, accessories for the main products so but those do sell so yeah uh, with the probably in the, the brands that we've closed in the last month there's a lot of other big suppliers with great margins so we're gonna put a lot of focus a lot of resources behind those so and they have a lot of search volumes a lot of interest in, in those products and those brands so I know that'll help us to get out of the seasonality of our store um, and be able to have more of a range of products that sell throughout the year. So, although, you know, we're going into this, the season where our main products sell, but still we want to all year long be able to have consistent sales. 100%, 100%. Um, so what do you think right now? Obviously, we're going to add more brands, we're going to optimize the ads and stuff. What do you think is the main bottleneck to really take the things to the next step? So is it dialing in the ads? Is it finding one big winning supplier? What do you think you really need to take things to, let's say, 100 a month? Yeah, I, ads, I think, and I think we're well on our way, especially like you mentioned, um, we're going, I was getting some feedback on that last week, so we've definitely been optimizing, I think, the ads, because if right now the, you cut off any supplier outreach, I think we have the, the products, the suppliers, the brands to get us to that point. Um, so, I mean, we're always going to be wanting to reach out to suppliers, but I think dial in the ads uh, is definitely going to get us there. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in the yeah. have a whole bunch of good suppliers, a whole bunch of good suppliers, but they, they kind of neglect the ads because maybe some people don't like numbers, maybe it's not their thing. It, it is true, yeah. but um, it, that's often like you could have the nicest website in the world, you could have the best suppliers in the world, but if you don't do your ads right, it's going to be tough to really scale. So yeah, I think for you, it's not that they were done bad, you had them done pretty well and it was bringing you results. But I think like really, really dying, dialing in those to the, where they're at like 10 over to 10 level optimized. Yeah. It's going to take you there. Awesome, man. Um, yeah, definitely. So just a couple more questions. So for the goals for the score, what do you mm -hmm. see 
kind of goals in the next couple of years? Like, do you want to build this and, and this be your primary source of income? Do you want to start a second store eventually? Do you want to eventually sell one? What do you see for your goals in high degree income? Yeah, I mean, the focus is this store. I, I know we're going to get real busy, especially in these, uh, now that our dial, ads are dialed in and um, we have the fall and the winter is going to be big for us. So focusing on, on the store, doubling down on it for the next six months is going to be important. Also getting SEO. Uh, SEO for the long term is going to help us out also too with our margins, be able to yeah. just get organic uh, traffic. So that's going to be huge for us. So opening up a second store, I think that would, uh, it's something that interests us, but I think we still have work to do. And I don't want to leave this here at this point, this store, and then jump on something else. I think that's uh, not the time for that. So really keep building this. And I know it'll be something that we can outsource customer service and all of that. And, and then we can, when it's feasible, jump to something else. But at, the, at, at this time, I think we're at a great point. So we just have to kind of maintain our focus. I agree, man. Yeah, a lot of people, they, they see that first early results and then they're like, oh, I want to start from scratch again. I have a better idea. But almost yeah. always the, the right answer is to just keep doing the boring, <laughs> repetitive stuff until those results start to come down for you. So uh, I think you guys yeah. honestly have an awesome niche, an awesome store, a bunch of good suppliers. So yeah, if I was you, I would probably do exactly what you guys are going to do and just keep going all in there for the foreseeable future. And I think you can turn it into like a super unique store when you get SEO dialed in you have a whole bunch of good suppliers that you could eventually sell for a yeah. pile of money but I think in the short term like the next couple of years you guys just gotta go all in where you're at yeah absolutely and just um, last question before we wrap up so if you could give advice to someone considering joining our program or we're getting started at high Ecom, or even if you're giving yourself advice um, seven eight months ago what advice would you have or what advice would you give well, I'd say, yeah, I mean, no regrets from this course. I think we're here thanks to, like I mentioned, that feedback. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's if you really want to go at it efficiently, both time and money, because, yeah, there is an investment to it, but, man, time is money. And you can waste a lot of money and, and you can kind of quit um, and get uh, you know, a lot of disappointment if you don't know what you're doing. So I think the the guidance that we've received or that we're receiving here has is, is been uh, instrumental. But that being said, even once having that, it's, it's, you can't expect someone to hold your hand. You have to put in the work consistently and focus on the big three, closing suppliers, dialing ads, and having, you know, optimizing your, your store, your product pages. Uh, there's other little details that you do have to put some time into it, but always kind of like when you're swimming, look up to see you're going in the right direction. Don't get bogged down with the little details um, because that's what's really going to make or break you. Speed is important. Uh, the faster you, you do that, the more experience you'll, get, you'll gain in the more important areas of this business. So that'll help you to really be successful. Great advice, man. Yeah, I'm, I completely agree with you. I think like if you're serious about it, it, it like in terms of time and money, like it's going to save you time. It's going to save you a lot of money on like waste of money on trying to figure out ads and trying to figure out this stuff on your own. So if you are serious mm -hmm. about it, it definitely makes sense. Like whether it's my program or any program, like pay for a mentor. Yeah. So if you're if you're trying to do something, the best thing to do is find someone who's done it and then have them teach you. The the only time it doesn't make sense is if you're not sure about it. Like if you're someone who's like you're not sure if you're going to put the work in or you just want to see maybe then obviously don't do it yeah but you're actually here to put the work in um for the long term and this is something you're serious about i completely agree with roger like it'll save you more time and money than you spend 100 percent um well thanks a lot roger it's been an absolute pleasure having you on um it's been great chatting i'm just gonna log off now but um thank you for coming on yeah I really appreciate it